Former World Bank President Robert Zelik says the world economies are in very different stages of growth. Now, Mr. Zelik also served as the, as the U.S. Trade Representative under President Bush No. 2. I spoke with him from the Peterson Institute of International Economics. We're in different phases, and right now there's a concern that while the U.S. has a moderate recovery, Europe is still stumbling. Uh, Japan uh, is in a very experimental period, but it may, at least in the short run, have some good potential growth. And now the emerging markets, which have been the source of two-thirds or more of global growth over the past five years, are running into their own difficult patch. And part of this, of course, is related to China's transformation to a different growth model. Are you, are you happy with how Europe's handled the last couple of years with the situation with Greece and Southern Europe? Well, I think everyone uh, feels that the Eurozone is a very important part of the world economy. Uh, it's going through its own political transition as the Eurozone members figure out how to deal with a combination of issues, some the debt, some the competitiveness, uh, but also the banking system. And so I think the steps that were taken uh, last year by Mario Draghi of the, of the European Central Bank bought time, but we're now in a phase where we have difficult reforms to be made, particularly on the structural productivity and growth side. And the question is whether the countries will be able to sustain the politics of those reforms. Do you think Europe could have acted faster and would that have made a difference where they stand today? I think you know, for all the countries in the world economy, you're going to have people uh, doing retrospectives. But I think you know, one of the parts that I approach all this work, not only in the past, but looking ahead is, you know, we're, we're really in, in uh, novel territory here. People are trying to figure this out as they go. And so, for example, one of the things affecting the global economy today is the prospect of the U.S. withdrawing from the quantitative easing monetary policies. Now, those are rather dramatic, unusual steps, uh, may have been appropriate, but as they uh, look towards the so-called tapering, I think you're going to have an effect on liquidity in markets, and you've seen this in the prospects for some of the emerging markets. So my main point is whether it's uh, Asia, the Americas, uh, Europe, Africa, um, we have to really keep a fresh eye to try to anticipate the next round of challenges, uh, which we will undoubtedly encounter. Part of what the IMF said is the fact that uh, this, this tapering, as we call it, of the interest rates is causing a spike in interest rates, at least in the medium term. And they're saying that's going to have an adverse impact on a lot of the international economies. A explain to our international viewers why that is. Well, through the Federal Reserve, but also through the Bank of England and some of the policies now out of Japan, to a degree the European Union, you've had an extremely uh, far-reaching set of monetary policies, in particular the quantitative easing policies that have been led by the Federal Reserve. Now, those policies uh, were designed with different purposes, but in brief, they were to try to help prop up some of the values of assets, try to increase some demand in those economies while they recovered. It's inevitable that that monetary stimulus has to be withdrawn, just as the fiscal stimulus had to eventually be withdrawn. And when that happens, what you see is markets are no longer looking at valuation simply by the fact that a lot of money will flood into markets, whether it be equity markets or the bond markets or junk bond markets or real estate markets. And now they're going to have to see whether the underlying economic value of those assets warrants the prices. That, that you'll see in markets. And that's the difficult transition. So what Ben Bernanke and the Federal Reserve are doing in the United States is, is making an assumption, and they're watching day by day, month by month, whether the economic recovery in the United States justifies the withdrawal of this monetary stimulus.